Welcome to Cardinal Sports Live. Tonight, the men's golf team gets red hot down in Puerto Rico. Is women's softball returning to last season's progress? And it's March, so it's only means, it only means it's time for March Madness. This is Cardinal Sports Live, and it starts right now. Good evening and welcome to Cardinal Sports Live. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy evening to talk some BSU athletic, athletics with us. I'm your host, Nolan Beaumont, and with me are Nick Defoe and Hunter Big Red Skillman. Uh, this is our last show before spring break, guys. Do we have any plans after, uh, after this week just to go somewhere, just, get, just to get out of Muncie? You know, I know that spring break is usually a time for people to go out and travel and kind of use that break essence because, you know, as students, we've just been working so hard. But for me, I'll just be doing a whole lot of homework either here in Muncie or back home because I need to graduate on time. Yeah, I, I'm still up in the air. I got a couple friends who are trying to invite me to go on a vacation. Still trying to plan it this late. It's giving me a little bit of worries, but uh, I think I might end up going home. But it's good to have options. I wasn't planning to go anywhere, but I was invited to go to Miami the week after, so the week we come back. So I, um, I unfortunately had to decline because I wasn't, I wasn't going to miss this show. I wasn't going to miss being here with you guys, and I can't miss school either. So. But to tee off, uh, to tee off tonight's show, uh, is the men's golf team who started their spring break a bit early this week as they competed in the Dorado Beach Collegiate Invitational in sunny and warm Puerto Rico. It's safe to say that the team took full advantage of that weather as they dominated the other teams all throughout the week, but they did finish third as a team and two of the players were finishing in the top 10 as individuals. With this dominant performance, is this something we will see consistently throughout the spring with this golf team? You know, before the season started, we did not know how this team was actually going to perform. I mean, we haven't seen a whole lot of success in recent years, so going into this, we were a little bit confused. But I think that this mindset that this team has this year, along with the experience and the practices that they've been working towards, I think that we'll be able to expect a lot of success from this team as long as they keep this same mentality. I was really impressed with the way that they played in this. I think uh, if a couple different things happened, we would have ended up winning that instead of getting third, which would have been really cool. Uh, I think our freshmen really uh, set the, the tone for the rest of the season in Puerto Rico. I don't know if we can get too used to everyone being on their game like that because I feel like that course really complemented our, our play style. But uh, I do expect us to have some more top ten finishes. Uh, that was really impressive. Uh, all freshmen, too, uh, with the exception of Ali. He's a red shirt, but I, I was really impressed with this team. Yeah, very impressive because especially in, in, the, in the fall, we didn't do as well. And coming into spring, we had an we ha we had a invitational in February, kind of a long break from invitational to invitational. So for them to go from fifth place in that last one to third place in this one is kind of a big step and really good for us as a whole. And as I said earlier, we saw stellar performances from everyone on the team. Who are we going to lean on for the leader of this team? Who, who are we going to choose to lead us into the promised land? As we're looking at stats, we already know that the man that's going to be at the top of everything is Joey Ranieri. I mean, he's been already going off this season, doing everything in his arsenal. And I think that he's just going to continue to take advantage of the field and the course. But also, this freshman, Cash Ballar, I mean... This is kind of like the ginger version of John Daly that we have on our team. I mean, coming in as a freshman, you never know really what to expect, but this kid is actually doing very well. I mean, Joey Ranieri, as I said earlier, he is leading the team in statistics, but Cash, even though he's only played nine rounds, he's already placed in the top five, which no one else has done on this team besides Ranieri. So I think that even though he is a freshman, I think we'll be able to lean very, very hard on him because he does have that skill set. Yeah, I think Nick just hit it really right on the head there. I've been really impressed with Cash Bilar in the ginger mullet. He's doing us a really good job representing the ginger army. Uh, we've just done really good with our freshmen this year. All of the people that finished in the top ten forest in Puerto Rico were freshmen. Uh, the one thing that did really stand out is if Joey Ranieri did not fall out of the top ten, he ended up in the, in the top 25 down there towards the bottom. But not towards the bottom of the overall, but you know what I mean. Uh, Basically, 
I think that this has been one of the most impactful freshman classes we've had at Ball State since I've been here. We got people like Megan Walonsky, Peyton Sparks, Cash Bilar, Ali Khan as the red shirt doing his first sh uh, showing this year. It's been absolutely fantastic for us to see the freshmen really coming out and getting us something to get excited for in the next few years. The team finished first in, in the first two days. They just kind of came up a little short in the third day. But if they can continue just to stretch that for three days or four days or however many days the tournament these tournaments last, I think we can see a lot of improvement and a team to watch out for in all these other invitationals. As, but as a golfer myself, I understand that every golf course is different and has their own difficulties to themselves. The course is almost 7,200 yards long, which is a pretty long course for a collegiate, for, for at, at the collegiate level. But what are some of the other difficulties about this course that you guys were able to find out? Well, not only the distance is that going to play a huge factor, but also this course is a par 72. So we're averaging about a par 4 every hole. Like, this is not going to be anything simple for any of our people on our team. I mean, you go in there with a par 4, you know that's going to take you at least four strokes to get there in that hole, and it could possibly be more. So there's a lot that goes into this. Also, their sugarcane course that's there has larger fairways, more forced carries, and deeper bunkers. So it's not even just the course being so difficult, but you also have to watch out for all the hazards that are on that course as well. Yeah, if I'm playing the old Tiger Woods games, I love this course. I want to play on it because, like what Nick just said, the long straight fairways almost looks like a runway. In real life, I'd be terrified because I am known to be slicing because I'm a very subpar golf player. But if you, if you can hit it straight in these fairways, you're going to be set up for huge success to have a lot of fun during the day, too. If you're hitting into the, off the tee into some of those hazards, there's water on almost every single hole on that course. It is crazy. They like to set up a lot of the sand traps surrounding the green, so if you miss just a little bit, you're, you're, you're on the beach, basically. I do really, really like this course. It was a really beautiful course. They have uh, online... Uh, overhead flying basically kind of like a jet showing off this beautiful course and it's it's huge it's just such long fairways and that's what I really think uh, the guys were able to capitalize on they were able to really hit it straight you saw Cash Bilar was able to have five birdies in an eagle he did that by not slicing or fading the ball too much and was really efficient in those fairways while he had the the clean space to work with not to mention that they're playing on an island so there's going to be a lot of wind circulating around that island as well and you guys are talking about cash. Maybe he really is going to be our John Daly, just teeing it off for 300, 400 yards down the fairway if it's going to be that open. But we'll be trading our, we'll be trading our clubs in for some bats to check in with, with what the softball team is doing this weekend after the break. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there. What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs, just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. Welcome back to CSL. When we last discussed the women's softball team, uh, they had a very slow start to the season. 
but have almost reached a 500 record and can achieve the, they can achieve that this weekend at the Coach B Classic. Do we see this team getting over that hump this weekend, or do you, or do you think they'll stay under that 500 mark? As a Ball State student, I always want to be optimistic. But, you know, as a statistician looking through this, I kind of just – there's a, not a whole lot of optimism that can be really picked out of this. I mean, it's going to be a challenge for us. We're facing Murray State, who's 9-5, and five, but they're going to be the challenge because they have this winning record in neutral zones and their away games as well. So it doesn't matter whether they're home, they're neutral, they're away. They're going to go out there. They're going to do their best. They're going to succeed, whatever it takes. But I think that we'll have better luck against Southern Illinois because – as we're the away team, we're 1-0 on the season as an away team. So that undefeated streak, I think that we'll be able to maybe continue that if we can just have some good luck and play well. But Northern Kentucky, I think that's going to be our most even match for us as they're only one game away from a losing streak. And I know we haven't been performing the best, so at least this is putting us at like an even level with them, and so that way it's more competitive. Now Northwestern, that's going to be a huge hill for us to climb. So if we're really wanting to turn this tide after this weekend, we need to come in fierce and ready to compete because a lot of these teams are not going to play around, especially when they're looking to get rid of us. We got five games we're looking at this weekend, so I'm going to be really pessimistic here, unfortunately. We got five games. If we win three and lose two, we're closer, but we're still not at 500. We got some really good teams to play. I don't see us going four and one over the weekend, especially for some of the reasons here I'll mention in a sec. It's extremely unlikely that we beat Southern Illinois. Both times we played them last year, we got beat pretty handily. Uh, I think we only put up two runs in both games, and they put double-digit runs. So, And that was uh, also a season where we won 37 games. I don't fully believe we're quite the same team that we were last year. In fact, I can see us honestly making things worse for ourselves because we play teams like Northwestern as well and Murray State and, and some other really good ones. It's hard to put your school pride away and just be very realistic about the whole situation, but I'm going to have to agree with you guys. I don't think we're going to see us get to that 500 mark. I think we'll probably go two and three this, uh, this weekend. But as long I, the way I feel is as long as we're winning games, you know, we're doing something right, but it's just, it's just all about getting over that 500 mark and just solidifying that we're here to stay and we're here to win some games. Uh, the team begins play tomorrow in a doubleheader facing Murray State and Southern Illinois, just like Big Red talked about. We have seen the the race we've seen it earlier this season we've seen the racers earlier this season but fell short of getting the win in that game what can we do differently uh, so that we can get that win and it just, history doesn't repeat itself our main focal point for this match needs to be defense 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 our offense is not a problem I mean the last time that we faced them we had nine hits to their six so it's already showing that we have the offensive production on our team and we don't really need to focus on that as much but putting that emphasis on defense, like I said, because Murray State scored five unanswered runs all the way until the sixth inning when we only put up two runs, which were our only runs of the day. So holding them back and not letting them produce as much in the early innings is going to be a very big focal point that I, need to, I think that we need to focus on. But also I think that we need to get aggressive on the base path. I mean, we haven't been seeing a whole lot of steals, so I think that if we can get our players to start stealing bases more, at least they'll put themselves in a position to score and put our team in a better position to win. I think there's a couple problems going on so far this year. We got a really late start uh, against them last time. We didn't put up any runs until the sixth inning. By then it was, it was way too late. Uh, this team hasn't found a ton of success really at all on defense, just kind of like what Nick just talked about there. Almost all the games we've won this year have been solely because we scored more. I know that's how baseball works, so like no duh, but we've only had one dominant win all season, which was the 7-4 to four win against Western Illinois. Other than that, all of our, our wins this year have been decided by one run, and we're just not stopping the other team. If we can get a little bit of a wedge in between us and them, for when we know that our defense might might show a little cracking or something, then we have some wiggle room to work with so we don't have to ask our team to bail us out super late. I don't really think that uh, having to rely to win on one run margins and to come back super late is, is a super ideal strategy for, for these kinds of sports. I don't think a lot of people realize that there's so much momentum that goes into scoring first in these softball and baseball games. If you're able to score first and get out early, that's so much momentum and so much uh, just so much pressure on the other team to try to get back and try to outscore you e with even more runs instead of just one. Like I said earlier, we are on the right track to getting back on track of where we left off last season. What do we need to change in order to in order for that to happen? 
I'm going to make a statement, and it's going to sound like I'm kind of downplaying things, but, you know, I'm trying to look at it with a more focused point. I think we really need to get focused on where we want to place the ball. I mean, as collegiate athletes, there are certain expectations that you're supposed to hit. And so I think that if we can focus on where we're wanting to put the ball, at least that will put us in a better place where we're not just constantly getting put outs. And at least that way we can start to put runners on the bases. We also need our infield to be a wall and not allow anything to get past them because we've been seeing a lot of action where – Balls are just going in between girls' legs or going on the outsides. We're not making those cuts. So being able to be a tighter defense, get tighter on those corners, and at least focus in for those ground balls, I think that will strengthen our defense. And above all else, we need to bring that energy. I know that we have that energy with all these players because last year I got to see a bunch of them play. And I know a lot of them carried over into this year. So I know that if we bring this energy in and we bring this positivity along with the fierceness and the hard work that they've put in, I think that this will really turn around for them. And maybe we can even just put up a winning season. I'm going to be real. Like I said, they've been giving up a bunch of runs this season. We were able to win the last two games, which is really good. But in those two games, we gave up 11 runs. I said this last time, too, but asking your bats to bail you out every single time at the end of the game, it's never going to work. You, you, you have to give yourself the advantage in some situations. If you're always trying to crawl out of a, a buried alive situation, it's just not going to work. In seven of our ten games, we've given up five-plus runs. We can't do that. Giving up five runs and then asking your team to get you five runs every single game to have a chance of even being competitive in the game, it's just not going to work. we got to stop the runs. we got to get it down. And we got to do our defense a little bit of favors and put some runs up to, to stop the small margins of victory every single game. I think we might need to find some angels in the outfield to help us out with that, but not angels. Cardinals in the outfield. I think that'll suit us a little better. When we come back, we will be diving into March Madness and the MAC tournament. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. For what? My. Oh. <laughs> I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs. And that's still not enough to put food on the table. I am a 16-year-old boy who just got my first job to help, help feed my, my little, little sisters. sisters. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. People you pass by every day but never knew they were hungry. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! We are back, and it is time to get a little mad. The men's and women's basketball teams are finishing up their seasons this week with the men traveling to Western Michigan and the women here in Worthen against Eastern Michigan. Let's start with the men who have already clinched a spot in the tournament but are playing for seeding right now. Looking at the possible matchups, we could see what is the best scenario for the Cardinals once they get to Cleveland and play in that MAC tournament. I think that the most probable action that's going to happen is us playing Miami. And when you look at that matchup, we played them earlier in the season, and we actually beat them by 17. So this could be a very easy match for us, and we could easily advance past them as long as we're not getting too cocky and we're not making it seem as though things are very easy. And now for the MAC tournament, now that is a whole different thing. We need to come in there with a fresh mindset not focus on these other teams' records. And honestly, we just need to think back to that old adage that it's not about the size of the dog in the fight, but it's rather the size of the fight in the dog. So 
I believe wholeheartedly our Cardinals can pull this off. They just need to work hard as a team. I am going to spoil an answer uh, down the road a little bit if it's not already kind of obvious. Uh, I really think we need to not play specifically the Ohio Bobcats in the first round. If one of us moves a spot, either they move up or down or we do, I like our odds against Kent State or Buffalo a small amount better. I don't want to see Toledo either. Toledo is, is top of the food chain too. I'm not sure if this team can be any of those teams I just named. Akron and Buffalo is obviously really tough too. Our best bet is going to be some chaos. Uh, I don't. I don't really think in a normal scenario right now we're we're the best looking team to to go win the fight. Uh, we're we're kind of a Yorkie right now with a lot of fight and uh, and some some potential. You got the eye of the tiger on the Yorkie, but uh, it's it's just not a super great matchup with some of the teams we're going up against right now. I will say, even if we get the chaos I'm looking for, the odds still aren't super great for us because we did just drop a game to Central Michigan who's looking at being the last team in it, the eighth seed. So even if we get the teams that we don't want to see, we could still drop a game later in the tournament to a, a team that we really shouldn't, and that would be worse in my opinion. I can't promise you guys a MAC championship out of the Ball State Cardinals, but Big Red, I can promise you that MACTION is on the way. So I, ca ga I will guarantee you that right here, right now. The women's team has been a completely different story this whole season. Uh, we've, been covering, we've been covering the race for the tournament all season long uh, these last few weeks. And it's safe to say that they have clinched a spot, but it hasn't been confirmed yet. Uh, it's not set in stone, but could you guys see us making this tournament, number one? Number two, what's the best, ca uh, what's the best case for our seeding for that tournament as well? I think that we definitely can make a run for top three, maybe top four if things don't work out completely in our favor. But with many teams really behind us by just half a game, it really is anyone's race to take over any of these seeds. So I think that we just need to believe wholeheartedly that we are a team that's going to go in there and win. We need to not focus on records, not focus on seeding, any of that, because at the end of the day, it's just our team facing another team. So if we can go in there with this fresh mindset and also knowing that Eastern Michigan is second from the bottom in the MAC, I have no doubt that we will finish strong at the end of this MAC tournament. I will say we have one of the craziest photo finish positions I've ever seen really covering tournaments and stuff like that. I think this is going to be, uh, for a metaphor, I think it's going to be like one of those races in track where the tongue sticking out at the end is really the one that decides the winner. One team is really going to be upset, but since we're sitting in that four spot right now, it goes all the way down to that bubble right there. But I do think that since we have one less loss than every other team being considered, I think we'll be fine. I, I do think we'll end up in that 3-4 spot because a lot of teams have worse interaction within the, the bracket than we do. We're going all the way down to, to play against Eastern, and it's going to kind of go back to a Colts-Jaguars situation where if we can't win that game, no offense to anyone on Eastern Michigan watching, but if we can't win that game, we don't deserve to make it into the tournament in the first place because so many teams are going to have to play top teams in the tournament, and you really just don't want to see them, and we got really lucky with the scheduling. So since we got a break, and we have another break on where we're at right now in the seeding, if we don't make this tournament, it's, it's our own fault. Exactly. This, it, there's a, uh, a game, I believe a game and a half in between the four seed and the nine seed right now, so it's, it's, it's as close as close can get. Now it wouldn't be a, a Mac bracket if a Mac bracket breakdown per se if I didn't ask you guys to pick a winner out of the teams, and if either of our teams have a chance to pull out an upset and bust a move in the big dance. I mean, I really want to be optimistic. I know that our team can do a very good job. Now it's just all going to come down to coaching. Will we have the right rotations and will we have the subs and when they need to come in? It's just really going to come down to really tedious actions. But I mean. I don't know. End of the day, I'm really wanting to believe wholeheartedly in our Cardinals, but those Ohio Bobcats are a very dangerous team out there. I 100% agree. I think it's going to come down to Toledo or Ohio here. Those two teams have just really just set themselves ahead. Anybody who's really been following along with the MAC season is probably looking at, at me and Nick like, what? Because uh, they are coming off of losses to Bowling Green and I believe Akron, which really did set them back a little bit in the seeding race here. Uh, I believe if they would have won both of those games, they would have ended up being the first seed here. Uh, I Another thing that's really important is Toledo and Ohio are both going to have to be in the same state that they're originally from, but they, they got to go a little about two, three hours apiece. And I think that that, that neutral ground is really going to play a big factor. And we saw what Ohio was able to do last year. 
doing really well in the MAC and NCAA tournaments. And I think that tournament experience uh, coming back over is going to help them reload and try to get dancing again this year. I agree. Yeah, that tournament experience is something that you never forget. When we come back, I actually have created two brackets for both the men's and the women's teams myself. And we'll show these two and all of you uh, watching at home uh, my picks for the tournament and just see your guys' reactions. Stay with us. Stand is precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. We are back with some Macatology. It's Bracketology, but with the Mac, of course. I've done my own Bracketology of these tournaments, and we will start with the women, where I have the Toledo Rockets winning the tournament this year. What are your thoughts on that, Nick? I 100% agree. I mean, we're looking at the record. They're 17 and one. This team has only lost one time throughout this entire season, so it's gonna be really a big challenge for any team to kind of dethrone them. But I think if any team is going to take them down, I think it will be the Ohio Bobcats because they're the only team that actually beat this team throughout the season. So I think that the Toledo Rockets will take it home, even though our Ball State Cardinals only lost by three to them earlier in the season. Yeah, and exactly. I've, I'm going to go ahead and go with, like, just like I said, I, go, I went with Toledo. I actually did have Bowling Green with the upset in the first round with the six seed beating the three seed. And I actually did. I did not have Ohio in the tournament just because I figured they would lose that game and stay out of that, stay at that ninth spot instead of bumping into the eighth spot. Now, uh, the, with the men's race almost completely decided, it wasn't as difficult placing teams in those seeds, but picking a winner was a little more difficult, especially with Ohio and Toledo. Uh, but I'm going to have to go with, again, the Toledo Rockets. What's your thoughts on that, Big Red? I don't ever think picking the number one seed in the tournament is a bad idea. Analytically, we see so many number, seed, number ones win every single year. If you're able to dominate the conference in the regular season, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to in the tournament. You heard me say I think Ohio is going to win this, but setting up the food chain of the MAC tournament, in my opinion, I think it's going to be Toledo and Ohio there at the top. The, the middle level of the food chain is going to have to be the Akron and Buffalo teams, I think they're good. I think they could make some traction here at the end of the tournament if they get an upset. Uh, and then finally, you got kind of everybody else. I really think that that, that Akron team uh, is probably the, the middle team that has a better chance to go up and win. But I'm pretty sure it'll end up being Toledo or Ohio at the end of the day. Yeah, I did have, uh, as you guys saw, I did have Akron uh, upsetting uh, the four seed and playing into that second round against Toledo. But Toledo's just too strong. Uh, Ali Ali can only do so much for that team. And I also had Ball State getting another upset on that one as well. You know, I, it's, I just can't pick against Ball State in this first round. I think they do have a lot of potential to get out of that first round. But facing Ohio in that second round, it's going to be tough to beat them, especially with that tournament, uh, that tournament experience and just the, the season that they had. They had such an, an amazing season, especially after losing Jordan Presley. It's just there's nothing else that they can do. Uh, but before we head out, I'm actually going to make a little bit of a prediction myself for the big dance here, just an early prediction. I'm going to go with Texas Tech winning the big dance this year. I think they're a very underrated team. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I'm a big Chet Holmgren fan, and I'm a big fan of big men who can shoot the three, so I'm going to have to go with my boys in Gonzaga. 
I've been doubting the one seeds recently. Like I said, I've been thinking about that in my uh, bracketology reflections. I got to go with the one seed this year. I'm going to go with Gonzaga. Yeah, it's going to be tough to pick against them, but not for this guy. I'm going Texas Tech all day long. But that is all the time we have for tonight. Shout out to Nick Defoe and Hunter Skillman for being our analysts tonight. And shout out to all of our crew putting this show together. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at BSU underscore CSL and head over to YouTube, our YouTube page to check out Zeke Hansen and the CSL Plus crew. For everyone here tonight, including our producer K.O. Campbell and director Madeline Gibbs, I have been your host, Noel Boban, and we will see you in two weeks after, uh, for another edition of Cardinal Sports Live.